Welcome back to the Credible Dev YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be continuing our journey on learning Bash with lesson number four. If you haven't checked out the previous lessons, be sure to take a look at the playlist. You can also check out the blog. The blog has all of the posts up there, except for this one. This one's not posted just yet. So today, I thought we would do something a little more interesting. We're going to be creating some menus, and you already kind of, in a sense, saw a menu in one of the previous lessons. Uh, very basic stuff, and that's what we'll be creating today. Uh, the first one's very basic. The second menu has a bit more style to it. It's something that you've probably seen in certain application installers or certain Linux distribution installers that don't have the really fancy GUI interface, but they do have somewhat of a GUI. It's just inside of the terminal. So we're going to be taking a look at those as an example to show you how you can create menus of your own. Before we get into that, I just want to say thank you so much for all the feedback that I'm getting in the comments on my videos. I'm trying to take that feedback and implement it in future videos. As I'm a new channel, I'm just trying to get better, so I appreciate your feedback. Please keep that coming. If you have any advice for me or anything, let me know down in the comments. So let's go ahead and jump into it with our first basic menu example, where we'll be kind of combining an echo statement, a new statement that we haven't seen before called the select statement. And we'll also talk briefly about arrays, which we'll expand on in a future video, but you are going to see an array in this, uh, this particular example that we're going to do. And let me go ahead and paste some code here in our editor. And it will break it down and we'll go over what exactly is happening here. So to start off, remember you have to have your shebang at the st uh, start of the script. You're also going to have to make it executable. If you need to know how to do that, you need to go back to lesson one where I cover those topics. So the first thing that we have here is a variable called PS3. And we're setting that to select an option. Now, PS3 is a very special variable in bash scripting and it ties directly into this select statement. So this is going to be our prompt for the user when using the select statement. So whatever you put in this PS3 variable, that's what the user will be prompted with. So next we have the select statement where we're saying select an option that is in this list here. And we have the list that's broken up by spaces. So if you have an option that has a space in it, you need to wrap it in double quotes like I did this Endeavor one. And I know that Endeavor OS is usually put together, but I put a space there just to show this as an example. So we're going to say select an option that's in this list and then do this. And inside of our do, we're using a case statement, which is going to match on whatever, whatever choice they made that's assigned to this option variable. So the way that a case statement works is like if you chose Fedora, it's going to try to match on each one of these. And if it finds a match, it'll stop on that one and it'll run everything that happens after this closing parentheses and before these two double semicolons. So in our case, it's just this echo statement. But you could put more statements in there. If you wanted to call a function in here, you can do that. If you wanted to write something to a file, whatever you want to do, you can do it inside of there and just put it before these two double semicolons. And then when it hits these double semicolons, then it's going to go back and it's going to prompt them for another option. So if you wanted the menu to exit after they made a choice, then you would need to put this break statement after your echo statement. So we also have a quit option as one of the choices. And if they were to choose that one, that's exactly what would happen. It would echo out that it's exiting. And then it hits this break statement, which kicks it out of the menu altogether. And then if they were to choose something that's not in the menu, then we have this default option here that it would match on. So if it can't match anything above this, then it's going to match on the default one. And our default one's just going to echo out that they made an invalid choice and that they need to try again. So to end the case statement section, you just put case backwards. And then after that, we have done, which is what closes out our select statement up here. That's going to be the end of it. So kind of like when you have 
an if statement and it starts with if and it ends with if backwards the fi it's the same kind of thing for the select statement we're going to be doing done and that'll represent the end of it so let's go ahead and run this example and then see what the output looks like and go ahead and save this and then we will run it So there's our menu, and you can see that it automatically numbers these for us, and those are the numbers, or that's what the user will put in. They're not going to type in like Manjaro. They're going to choose one, two, three, four, five. So if we choose one that doesn't exist, like eight, we'll see that it tells us that it's invalid. And if we choose one that is there, like number four, Fedora, it'll show that you chose Fedora. And then if we want to exit it, we'll just type five to exit. And there it shows that it's exiting. So easy enough, right? It's a very simple menu. Now, one thing you might see that could be concerning is how we list out all these options like this. That could get pretty messy uh, if you had a lot of options or if the, the text in the option was really long. That could get hard to manage and be kind of ugly. So another way that you could do that is putting all these options into an array. And like I said, we haven't really talked about arrays and bash at all we will in a future video but if uh, i paste in an array here as an example so here we're defining options and we're saying that equal to and then we have all of these same options and we have them in double quotes because in the array for strings you need double quotes in other languages you might see that each one of these elements that's in the array separated by a comma or something like that, but in Bash, you just separate it with a space, and each one is inside of double quotes. And you could also include numbers in here as well, or uh, possibly other variables, things like that. You can get creative with it. So for our example, we're just going to do the exact same thing we did here. So in order to use this array in our select statement, it's pretty simple. We'll just replace everything that's here so here in quotes, we'll have the dollar sign and then an opening bracket and then the name of our array. And then we have these brackets here and we have an at symbol in there. That at symbol is going to expand all of the elements of our array. So it's essentially just going to replace this entire statement here with this. It's basically like swapping them out. So it just expands everything. That's how we would refer to that. So the statement is actually the same as it was. Nothing really changed other than we put all of them into an array and then we're just going to dump them out here with this statement. So if we save this, our menu should operate just as it did before. So we'll choose two for Manjaro, that works. Choose four for Fedora, that works. Choose nine for an invalid, that works. And then we'll choose five to quit. So you can see everything works exactly the same. This could just be a cleaner way if you had a lot of options or you had really lengthy option uh, text. So let's go ahead and move on to a different example. And this will be using the dialogue package. Now you'll need to install this before you can run this next script. So if you need to pause the video, go ahead and do that. And you can use apt or pacman, dnf, whatever distribution that you're on. Use your package manager to install the package called dialog. So once you've done that, go ahead and uh, I'll paste in the next example here. And then we'll go over it. So we start out with calling dialog. And then you'll see these back ticks throughout uh, all of the, the lines here. These are just saying that we're continuing what would have been a one line command that might be kind of ugly or hard to read. We're just continuing that on the next line. So it makes it a little easier to read. So we call dialog and then we're setting up some options here. So this back title is gonna display at the top of our menu. And then menu is the type of menu that we're creating and dialog has a lot of different options. And uh, I suggest that you take a look at the man page because 
there's just a ton of things that you can do with dialogue. A lot of information here. You'll find a lot of examples of using dialogue on the web. So if you search around, you need to learn how to do something with it. I can almost guarantee you, you'll find some examples and extra documentation on how to use this. So definitely check that out. So we're using a menu and this is the text that's going to display right above where the user makes their choices at. And then this next line with the numbers here, these are just setting up like the height and the width, like the layout of the menu. And then this one and two are the actual options. So we have a number and then the text that'll be displayed as the menu option. And let me go ahead and run this. So we can't run it, run it in this terminal that's built into VS Code. It won't display properly. So we'll have to run this in an actual terminal. So let me drag this over here where you can see it. And then we'll run this. Actually, I need to save it first. Don't forget to save, folks. So we'll run this and we see that the back title is displayed up here at the very top. And then we have our menu and the text for our menu we see here. And then we have these options, Manjaro and other. So the user can use the up and down arrows to go between the choices here. And you can use the tab to hop from cancel and OK back and forth. So if we made an option and we hit OK, it just closes out and that's the end of it. So you may be asking yourself, how do we get, you know, what choice that the user made? There's a lot of different ways to do this. And the way that I'm going to do it is by setting this dialog menu as part of a variable. Now we have to do some trickery with the output of the choice that the user made, because by default, the dialog application is going to output that the standard error. And we're not going to be able to put that in our variable directly. So we have to switch around the standard input, standard output, like all that stuff. We have to switch it around. And that may not make sense right now. And maybe we do a future video on that. Uh, if you feel like we should do a future video on that, let me know down in the comments once I get through this explanation of what's happening. So let me go ahead and swap out our code. So that way we're setting this to a variable instead. So what's happening here in our example is we have the choice variable that we've set up and we're setting that equal to that dialogue command that we just had. And we've thrown in a few extra things here and then we're going to echo out the value of the choice variable. So this may look kind of crazy to you right here. So let me kind of explain what's happening. So to set this up, we have standard output, which is represented by one. And we have standard error, which is represented by two. Now, seeing this type of redirection is pretty common. A lot of times you'll see things redirected to a file. Like maybe you want the standard error output to an error log file, for example. But in this particular case, what we're doing is we're creating a new file descriptor, which is represented by the number three. And we're pointing that to the standard output, that's what this uh, little greater than sign is. So we're pointing that to the standard output, and then we're redirecting the standard output, which is number one, to standard error, which is number two. That's what's happening here. And then we're redirecting the standard error, which is two, to our temporary file descriptor that we created number three, because remember the choice that the user made is going to go to the standard error output. So we want to redirect that. And so that way it ends up coming out in our variable. So after we've redirected the standard error, which was two to our temporary uh, file descriptor, which is three, the last part of it cleans it up on uh, the number three. We're getting rid of that here because it was just temporary. So in effect, we are redirecting the standard error to three, which has been pointed at the standard output. So this should take the choice that the user has made and put it into the choice variable. So I know that may sound complicated or a convoluted way of doing things, but it's pretty common within bash scripting to do these types of redirections. 
So if we go ahead and run this, what should happen is once we make our choice, we should see the number output onto the screen. So let's go ahead and pull our terminal back up, clear the screen out here, and we'll run it again. So let's choose number one, and we can see up here at the top that number one was output with our echo command. So if we run it again, and we choose number two instead, we'll see that two was output. So what you could do with this is you could take this variable and then you could put it into one of those case statements like we've already used. So then you could do something with that command or maybe you could use it in an if statement, something like that, or put it into a function. You know, you could use it as a parameter or argument into some type of function. You can get kind of creative with what you do with this. Now, like I said, these dialog menus are very powerful. You can do a lot of different things with them. With like progress bars, you can show calendars in them. You have password boxes. There's all sorts of things you can do with dialog. So I encourage you, take a look at some examples online. Maybe look on GitHub at an app that has one of these menus to see what they did with it. And you'll find some pretty interesting ways to use these. Now, I'd be really interested to see what kind of things you guys have done with them. So if you have a GitHub or you have a script up there, then uh, let us know down in the comments. I like looking at the things that people do with their bash scripts. So that's going to be it for this video. Our next video, we're probably going to be talking about files, maybe some file manipulation, I'm thinking. But let me know down in the comments what kind of videos you would like to see, specifically around the bash scripting. But if you want to see other types of Linux videos, let me know down there too. If this video helped you in any way, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. I really appreciate it. And everybody have a great weekend. Thanks.